Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonicwave Studios and brought to you by our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author, Mia Molson Zia Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We're here with a Texas Ranger, Army veteran, and political activist um, who uh, made some headlines recently, being an advocate for Ashley Babbitt, and uh, that, who was uh, was murdered on January 6th at the Capitol. And uh, we have a gentleman here who did some research on the um, what happened on January 6th. He got uh, subpoenaed, and um, there's been a lot of stories about it, and he'll give uh, his side as well, too. So we got some breaking stories live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studios in beautiful uh, South Texas around Corpus Christi, Texas Ranger, Army veteran, and political activist. Um, did some research on January 6th at the Capitol, ladies and gentlemen. Eric Brayden. Eric, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, Mike. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I got 12 head of, cow head of cattle, so I'm a rancher. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, well, I'm glad somebody from J6 did not take those. Otherwise, you would be probably raising hell right there, too. So, <laughs> yeah, well, man, Thank sure you for having me. I really appreciate your time, Mike. No problem. Well I'm, well, I'm sure they're listening as well, too. And, of course, uh, you got your uh, fellow listeners listening as well, too. And uh, you're a Texas Ranger, Army veteran, political activist, and um, you you became an advocate for uh, Ashley Babbitt after what happened on January 6th. You became involved in the uh, Stop the Steal and also um, some other uh, you know, some other um, political activism as well, too. And you did some research on January 6th at the Capitol. You got subpoenaed, and um, we're, we're going to hear your side of the story on that one, too. And uh, before getting all that, Eric, um, actually, let's go back to tell us how you first got started. Go all the way back. Texas Ranger, Army veteran, and more. Rancher, uh, well, I, I ended up uh, landing here about four and a half years ago in South Texas, and uh, it, it had some cattle on it, and they just started multiplying, and I just kept on, you know, uh, you know, growing the herd, and and you know, before I know it, I've, I've you know, I've got got my nice little little uh, stockpile of, of cattle, so you know, that kind of worked out really good. My 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 family's been in the cattle business uh, their whole life, entire life, so it's it runs in the family, so. It's just a nice little ranch that I had just kind of for retirement. I'm a disabled veteran, you know, from the Army, 11 Bravo, and, uh, you know, stood up for my country to, to you know, fight against uh, any kind of foreign or domestic, you know, terrorist uh, at, at whatsoever. And, uh, you know, I just kind of fell into, I fell into a category, you know, like one of those people that just couldn't sit there and watch what was going on. I couldn't watch, you know, all the devastation that was happening in America. I couldn't, I couldn't watch the people you know, uh, you know, just being attacked constantly, you know, being assaulted, you know, our, our, our way of life, uh, you know, just innocent people being attacked. You know, we had the summer of love that happened. It was horrible. I, it was like torture watching our country being burnt down. And eventually I, I had the moment of realization that I needed to stand up. And, you know, there was a call out, you know, one day and it was to protect the, the, the police in uh, St. Uh, in a, in a uh, Louis, Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, I showed up there. That was really kind of my first time to, to stand up for anything. I was I was defending, you know, uh, the police officers lives there. It wasn't uh, me in agreement of, of what they were doing, you know, the, what the cop did, you know, to Breonna Taylor or anything like that. It was just the rhetoric and the, and the, 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 the threats that were behind, one, you know, attempting to, to begin to you know attack police officers. So that was kind of one of my first stands was to stand up for the good police. And I mean the good police because there's plenty of bad ones. I take it by a case by case basis. And, you know, uh, you know, I, I, they're not all good. Don't get me wrong. So I don't, I don't have a blind faith in police officers whatsoever. I've actually had police officers, you know, commit some, uh, you know, pretty, br uh, pretty bad police brutality on me in my life, you know, and they've, they've actually trumped up charges and took SWAT team to my house to, you know, attack me, you know, without, you know, without legitimate charges, trumped up charges. So, you know, I, I'm very aware of, of what the situation was. And I knew that there was kind of maybe a possibly a place for me to kind of be an in-between kind of bridge the gap kind of person in that scenario, not necessarily somebody where to go there and be aggressive, but someone to, to be kind of a mediator, kind of a peacemaker in the moment. And I did that very thing in St. Louis. There was a guy that was about to grab a rifle from one of the Patriots. I stepped in, talked to him. Everybody was freaking out. Guns were pointing out all over the place. I mean, it was it was a dangerous situation. And, you know, I stepped in and I talked to this guy, pulled my, you know, my, my little cover down. And I said, hey, man, we're not here for you. I, you know, I, I, I don't we don't even disagree with you. We don't even know who you are. You know, and this guy was like, really? And, he, and I was like, yes, we're not here to attack you. This is this is not what we're here for. You know, and he and he we talked for a second. And I told him my 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 situation. He was like, well, you're you're, you're with us. And I was like, essentially, yeah, I'm, I'm not OK with police brutality. I've been a victim of it, you know, 
And, and, it, and it, it, it opened up the door of opportunity for that guy to go tell the other people, hey, they're not really here for us. They're not here to attack us. Everybody needs to calm down. And the whole thing calmed down and everything calm and, and relaxed. But if that man would have grabbed that guy's rifle, there would have been a couple hundred dead people at least that day in Louisville, Kentucky. So that was my very first real kind of stand out there in public to, to go in the middle of something. And it was extremely dangerous, Mike. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel about the situation in uh, Minneapolis with, um, with, with George Floyd? How'd you feel about that? You know, I mean, that's, that's such a mess. I mean, that's uh, the, the, the reaction was completely uh, wrong. It was, it was absolutely uh, disgraceful. Uh, you know, uh, it, you look at the history of George Floyd and a lot of people don't want to do that. Okay. I mean, obviously the man was, you know, had a, had a pretty checkered past. There's no doubt about that. I mean, there's charges, you know, on him for pointing a gun at a pregnant woman's stomach. I mean, that's, that's pretty bad stuff. So I think the mentality of turning him into a saint was the wrong thing. I think going after and, and destroying the, you know, uh, you know, the country and, and the different cities uh, across the nation was a, a huge mistake. Uh, didn't accomplish anything. Uh, it actually divided the country, I think. And, uh, you know, it was, it was one of those things that you look back at it and, and you look at the situation. I don't agree with what the police officer did. So, you know, that put me on at odds with a lot of different people out, out there that wanted to, you know, literally justify what the officer did. And I wasn't going to do that. But I also wasn't going to justify the fact of what they were doing to the country. So the reaction to it. And there needed to be some kind of understanding behind that, that, hey, we don't like what he did. OK, but at the same time, you have to understand the full situation of how he died. You know, there's there's you know several you know factors that, that were included and in, including fentanyl. That was one of the things that he saw, which kills one hundred thousand over one hundred thousand people a year in America. Mm -hmm. So let's not act like, you know, that's a good thing or that it was OK for him to be a person that was even dealing fentanyl to people. Essentially, he was one of those people that was assisting people with overdosing on this drug and which he ended up dying from. So if anything, we can call it a cautionary tale about fentanyl. Really, if you want to, we should have used that as a learning experience when George Floyd died, how dangerous it was. It should have been something. It was overshadowed by the violence and the rhetoric and all the all the you know damage that was done. So that's unfortunate. But that's that's what happened. And do you think Arthur Chauvin did the right thing by, uh, you know, putting his uh, foot right on the guy's neck, making him breathe? And um, do you think he used less force, more force, or what was that considered legal or so? No, no, they should have got him medical attention immediately. There's absolutely no reason why they should have done that, that, that Chauvin should have done that. I, I absolutely think that it, 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 uh, it, it, it was definitely a factor in his death, whether it was the reason why he was he died. I don't think I don't I don't think that, but I do I, I do think that it was a factor in, in his in his death, and and that's what kind of put me at odds with a lot of people out there that were just die hard cops can't do anything wrong because they can. I've seen them do it. I was arrested at the North Star Mall in San Antonio. I was the disabled veteran that was arrested for not wearing a mask. Went viral on Infowars. We ended up doing doing, doing an interview with uh, Owen Schroyer, you know, and and it was you know the in, in the video you can obviously see clearly see that the officer puts his arm around my neck and he breaks my neck. I actually ended up having severe back uh, neck, you know, fractures in my neck and my vertebrae from him grabbing around my neck. I wasn't fighting him. I wasn't fighting anyone. And uh, they absolutely hurt me. And I, you know, I, the, the video speaks volumes. It, 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 Twitter even banned it from being played on Twitter. You can't take the link from my arrest in San Antonio at the North Star Mall and post it on Twitter. It will not allow you. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really interesting how they tie into uh, January 6th as well, too, for um, what Ashley Babbitt's like. Do you think that was the media's doing or is it just the way of um, the police trying to uh, get back at you? Uh, I'm sorry. Say it again. No, you, no, you, you skipped you, out. You, you talked about the um, you being at the rest of the North Star Mall for uh, not wearing a mask in San Antonio, Texas. You know, how, how are they trying to uh, tie you to uh Ashley Babb as well, too, on January 6th. You talked about uh, they're finding ways to uh, to um, to tie you, rescue yeah. you, and uh, everything like that. Well, it was uh, – my arrest at the North Star Mall was about 14, 15 days prior – well, it was it was the 23rd of December. So it was, it was uh, you know, literally about, you know, 13 days, roughly, between the time that I was arrested and the time that I was, you know, uh, actually, you know, the, at January 6th actually occurred. Uh, so, you know, I was I was in recovery. I was in extreme pain from it. Uh, I was on bond. I wasn't going to be able to go anywhere because I was on bond, couldn't leave the state, couldn't do any of that kind of stuff when you're on bond. And 
you know, essentially uh, January 6th happened. I was, you know, nowhere near D.C., didn't go there. didn't have anything to do with it. I was at the Texas Capitol at, with all the rest of the people there at the Texas Capitol, you know, minding our business in Texas. I, we had no idea what the hell was going on in D.C. whatsoever. None of us were, you know, I mean, I, we, we, I got text messages from people saying, hey, there's something going on. It doesn't look good, you know. I mean, that's that's the extent of it. And then, then somebody said, hey, some they're, they're saying that some little girl was shot. So we, we, we had, you know, information there that, you know, there's, there was a little girl that had been had been shot. And we didn't know anything else. I mean, that's literally the extent of what we knew in Texas on January 6th that was happening in D.C. So completely disconnected, nothing to do with anything that happened there whatsoever. But we were there at the Capitol, you know, standing up, you know, against the, the election and, uh, you know, the 2020 election, which. Really, if you want to be honest, we should have been standing up against every single election that's been held for about 20 years because they've all been bogus. Mm -hmm. Or even or even going <laughs> all, the back, way down to, all the way down to Bush Jr. <laughs> <laughs> or even going back to uh, Texas, where they were they stormed us to uh, become like an independent country, independent state or stay in Mexico. You know, you want to go all the way back to that. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm an advocate for, you know, for, for Texas independence, really. I mean, it's, I think most people in Texas are really to tell you the truth. Uh, it's, there's actually a vote that's going up. It's actually pushed through and it's, it's about to happen. So Texas is actually about to do the vote on the planning for secession. So it's actually happening. Mm -hmm. So does this mean that Texas is going to be like a country itself or is it going to be like part of Mexico or is it just going to be like, um, you, you know, just uh, being like 16 from the union, just like with uh, Puerto Rico being independent? Yeah, we won't have borders against the United States. Uh, the federal government will be pushed out. Uh, you know, the, the, the United States military, uh, there may be some kind of understanding. I don't know. The, I, I, all the details. The vote is basically to, to put the plan out on how we would do it, how we're going to do it. So it's not going to be the vote for actually seceding yet. It's going to be the time to put it on the table, plan it out uh, well. And once it's planned out, we'll do the final, the real final, you know, vote for, for Texas secession. So it's, it is going to happen. It's moving forward, uh, but it's, it has to be done in a real intelligent you know, way so that, I mean, you know, we don't have any kind of real, real issues with, with the, with the transition. I mean, it's, there's going to be, are we going to use, you know, American currency probably, you know, are we going to, you know, are we going to be paying the taxes to the United States government anymore? Nope. We're not going to be doing that. Are we, are we going to be, you know, uh, are we going to have, you know, this, this situation where we have, you know, American military in Texas, if we don't want them, nope, we're not going to have that. If we want to shut the border down and, and put electric shock fence up all the way down it, <laughs> we can do that. That we'll be able to do what we want to. The big, the big problem is, is that the federal government has, has stepped foot in places where it really doesn't belong. We're supposed to be in the independent nation states in the first place. We wouldn't even be having this conversation about Texas seceding if they just left the independent states alone to handle their own business, it has turned into a, a, a national, you know, a federal uh, kind of type of system, type of mentality. And, you know, us in Texas, we're independent minded. We don't like that, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and if Texas were to become an independent, independent country, what's going to happen to Dallas Cowboys? You wonder about that. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe they become a better team. My God. <laughs> I agree with you on that, too, of course, with the uh, Washington commanders, formerly Redskins and everything else. And, of course, you know, everything tied into uh, January 6th and uh, everything else. We'll talk more about that with Eric Braden. But first, you listen to the Mike Widener Show at the MikeWidenerShow.com, powered by SoundCloud Studios. Visit our line at soundquabstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Soundquab Studios is the answer. Soundquab Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition way. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at soundquabstudios.com. Mention Mike Wagner. She'll get 20% off your first project. Soundquab Studio, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor, the Mike Wagner Show, international war ring author, Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has got great reviews. In Eve Love and George by Howard Celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and Manils. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at the MikeWidenerShow.com on over 40 podcast platforms. 
Heard on hundred countries, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Music, Odyssey, Radio Public, and also on YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe, Podbean, Buzzsprout, and also uh, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, LinkedIn, and take us with you on any mobile device. Also subscribe on BitChute and Rumble as well. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Wagner Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies. Makes great gifts 24-7. Go to Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Wagner Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas like T-shirts, hoodies, phone cases, and more, Amazon.com slash me and Molson's here. And for great books like Missing, Once and Wrinkles, and support the Mike Wagner Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, and the themikewagnershow.com. We're here with Texas Ranger and uh, Army veteran political activist Eric Brayton here on the Mike Wagner Show. And, um, you know, some people say that you're involved in the in the in the J six uh, incident at the Capitol, but of course you say you weren't as well too. And of course you had the military and uh, everything that was involved. And uh, speaking of the military, you've been an Army veteran for quite some time. And tell us about your um your experience with the Army and how'd you first get started? Well, the the Army was a very short uh, period for me. It wasn't very long. I I I joined in in two thousand five and early two thousand five, and I went in as a eleven Bravo infantrymen and you know basically went to, to basic training right away and got through basic training ait and went on to my airborne training i was actually an 18 x-ray special forces recruit it was kind of a, a not spoken about uh type of mos uh not very well known actually uh, edward snowden was actually an 18 x-ray so how do you like that, that? that kind of, yep yeah, so snowden was a 18 x-ray he he was actually the, the the training was so so hard that it, it actually caused you know uh, you know, damage, you know, in his legs, it, uh, sh you know, real severe shin splints and so forth. And that's what it was. It was, you know, basic training was not regular basic training. It was 18 x-ray 11 Bravo training at Fort Benning. So it was pretty tough. It was, it was bad. I, we, I actually lost a, a friend. Uh, he actually died in, uh, in that basic training. Uh, his name was Tyler, Tyler Dean wall. And, uh, he was, uh, he was a, a heck of a kid. He was, he was a young kid, 17 when I met him and he was turning 18. They gave him a waiver for it. And, um, you know, it was just a, it was just a really, really rough trend. It was hard. It was, it was the kind of stuff that, you know, we, we barely, most of us barely made it through it. And when I mean barely made it, I mean, we barely lived through it. I mean, it was, it's, it's the kind of stuff that your, your average, you know, person is just not going to make it through, you know, and, and unfortunately Tyler, you know, passed, he, he, he didn't make it. He, uh, overheated one day and, and fell and fell down and, and they just, uh, they couldn't cool him off. It was, he was, uh, so we actually had a, a funeral for my friend during, during, uh, training. And uh, it was a pretty, pretty solemn, solemn affair. It was, it was pretty rough. Mm -hmm. And then after basic training, you uh, also went, went into other service. What uh, parts of the country did you tour and were some of the um, missions and uh, things that you accomplished? Well, I, I didn't, you know, I, I went to airborne school and immediately what ended up happening was uh, I ended up getting injured in, in airborne school. So uh, pretty much my next phase of training was jump school. And uh, I ended up getting injured pretty bad. I ended up breaking my back and uh, pretty severely from L3 all the way down to my hips, fractured my hip and uh, ended up with a, 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 a little bit of a TBI and a, a bad left shoulder, uh, some pretty bad stuff in my shoulder. So uh, I was pretty much done uh, immediately. I was I was trained up, ready to go, you know, doing jump school. And then I I ended up basically uh, medically unfit basically what happened so there was a, a little less than two years that i was in and, and uh, they had me out pretty quick they knew they, they opted me for surgery to fuse my back and and do some some other work on my back and and do so, sh uh, shoulder shoulder surgery but i, I wasn't going to end up doing that so they, they ended up med boarding me out they actually retired me out of the army mm. so. and of course i experienced his care as well too with being a texas ranger as well too and um and of course, he talked about your herd of cattle as well, too. And uh, you also had the FBI and um, all the agents coming in. Were, were they also trying to, um, you, you know, try to take away t cattle, put liens on your house or property or anything like that? Or was it like, you know, were they trying to get you for tax evasion or any other crime like that? Well, actually, what happened was is uh, six days after January 6th, I, I, did, I made my stand. I went and showed up with a bunch of, uh, you know, you know uh, patriots, Second Amendment loving patriots exercising our second amendment at the at the texas capitol and i made statements to the fact of what happened about how you know the they had you know ended up killing a lot of people on january 6th i mean they were they were murdered i mean there's there four people that were murdered that day besides ashley babbitt it wasn't just ashley it was roseanne boylan kevin greeson and benjamin phillips 
The two men were actually hit with flashbang grenades by a police officer that was shooting them directly into the crowd, which is not SOP and it's not legal. So, you know, they got hit by the flashbangs that caused heart attacks. Roseanne Boylan was beaten to death. They, they claimed that she was uh, intoxicated and that she was on drugs, but that was just a cover up because when they did the toxicology report and it came out, there was no drugs in her system whatsoever. I mean, and the, what, whatever they're talking about, it's 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 not it's not what they're saying. So they tried to cover up Roseanne Boylan's you know, murder. Uh, she was actually beaten to death. And I know several other J6ers that were around that area. They were actually almost beaten to death, too. You know, some of them that were, were beaten over the head over 40, 40 plus times with batons, not even trying to fight, not even trying to, to attack the police officer. So there was a lot of crime that happened that day. A lot of people want to talk about the breaking of the windows and those things like that. Uh, there was no police officers killed that day. That was there was no there was not any police officer that was even needed to be in there overnight. Even Fanone, you know, basically, you know, lied about his injuries. He he acted like he was so hurt and everything like that. We saw the video footage, his his, you know, actual webcam footage. And the, the medic officer is saying, hey, you're fine. You're perfectly good. You're you can stand up and do it. Or go back to work or whatever you want to. But then you see the the horrible pictures of him laying on a bed with a neck brace and you know, looking like he's got all these wires coming out of him and everything. And, and you know, it looks looks so horrible. And they and they talk about it, how he, he was just so, you know, you know, I, I don't know what they I don't, I don't know. I don't get why they say it. But then they show him on a on an interview like the next day. He's out there just just fine in an interview the next day. So it's it's such a you know, it's like a you, you look at all the lies that happen. You know, we got Harry Dunn talking about, oh, they said they, they were chanting the N word, you know, and all this kind of stuff. We get his body cam footage. And his and one of the people that he trained in, in de-escalation tactics says, I don't even know who that guy is. He, he's got his AR-15 and he's literally yelling at people saying, you're all y'all are all about to get shot and like and screaming at them and freaking out, you know. And, and basically, the only thing that saved from that from happening was the Oath Keepers that are in, that went to trial. There was Oath Keepers that stood in the way and kept people from trying to you know go towards Harry Dunn at all. And, and calm the, the crowds down around and let them know, hey, back up, back up, don't come over here. But it was a bad situation. It could have been really a lot worse. You know, it was an out of control. There was a lot of out of control things that were happening that day on both sides. Don't get me wrong. But there was a lot of police officers that acted in ways that were less than professional. And the ones that actually killed people that day are murderers. They're, they're, that's, that's, it's that simple, mm -hmm. you know. And, and how many people did you say were uh, killed that day, contrary to media? Four people were killed. They claimed that, that Officer Sicknick died that day, and he didn't. Tucker Carlson had that on, on the TV and disproved that 100%. They claimed that he died at a certain time, and then you see the timestamp on the video that Tucker shows, and it's and there he is walking around just fine without any kind of injuries or any kind of anything at all. So where, where do we draw the line with, with what is important? What The truth is important, okay? And I, and I mean, I, I'm, I'm willing to admit, I mean, it got wild that day. Don't get me mm -hmm. wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying that people weren't out of control and things didn't happen that didn't need to happen at all. You know, but what I will say is we need to get down to the truth. The J6 Select Committee was not the truth. They did not find it. They did not put the truth out. And in fact, we've, we've, we've just disproved and discredited most of their witnesses that, that went up there and lied under oath. You know, so I don't know why these people thought that they were going to be capable of doing that and not be called out and found liars because we have found out that they're liars. You know, it's it's absolutely, you know, it's, it's just kind of strange. You know, none of the truth, real truth came out. out. Now we have all the videos that have come out. We have private videos of, of, of the facts of what really happened that day. You know, they want to say, oh, the people just overwhelmed the police and they went after the cops. It's not what happened. There, mm -hmm. There's people that had to die first before that happened. There's two men. They got dropped by, by flashbang grenades. They, they were spraying innocent women and children with pepper spray that were praying. You know, I mean, there's things that you can do. Okay. And then there's things that will cause a commotion and cause instigation to occur. And those police officers were doing everything they possibly could. Not all of them. Like I said, don't, don't get me wrong. Not all of them were guilty of what some of these police officers did, you know, but you know, there's, there was a, enough of them. And now we find out that they had, you know, over 40 plus undercover agents, and, and FBI agents and, and confidential informants that were setting up the narrative for, for some of these you know, proud boys and so forth, you know, to, 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 you know, really rally, get them in trouble. It's like the Whitmer affair, the Whitmer kidnapping. I mean, it's literally the same story. It's just at the, the J six, J six on the cap at the Capitol that day. It's really strange. It's, it's the tactics are the exact, exact down to a T. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. and, and you talked about the body cams as well, too. It's like, you know, having um, one police officer uh, say one thing, but the body cam says another and another person, um, mm -hmm. you know, does one thing. The body cam says another and there's controversy about that. Do you think the body cams are, in your opinion, illegal? You, you bleeped oh, out oh, on oh, oh, Okay, I'm sorry. I think we have some uh, technical issues here on the Mike Wagner show. Okay, can you hear me once again here? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. And uh, I was going to ask you as well, too. I'm sure body cam was not involved in this one. You talked about the body cams as well, too, on um, police officers. You know, they said uh, this happened, but the body cam says totally different. But then you had someone else um, say that uh, this happened, but the body cam uh, said entirely different as well, too. Do you think the body cams are considered legal or illegal? In your opinion, well, I I, th I think body cams are important. They're they're absolutely a necessity to 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 get the truth. I, you know, it's the the reality is is that some of these people perjured themselves. You know, some of these officers that said something happened, and then you can clearly see the the, the video footage going against what they're what they're claiming in their statements, their official statements, might I add. Okay, mm -hmm. I mean, even Mike Bird. I mean, you know, we 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 saw we, everybody saw Michael Bird shoot Ashley Babbitt. I'm pretty sure everybody saw the video. Except for Senator, or you know, except for uh, McCarthy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Evidently, now, McCarthy didn't now, see it. You know, now tell us. Now tell us who's Michael Bird again. Michael Bird is uh, Lieutenant Michael Bird was was the man that shot Ashley Babbitt point blank, no warning. Uh, he claimed in his statement to the police officers the day that it happened that he had uh, couldn't see her her hands and saw her as a viable threat, a violent viable threat. Okay, and then he goes on about, I guess, a month later on TV or three weeks later on TV or whatever it was. And he, and he makes a statement that he could see your hands and that they were empty. So, you know, I mean, the guy made, you know, he perjured himself on his statement and he goes on TV and he's, and, he, and he's held as a hero for shooting an unarmed female, an unarmed woman that happened to be a, a 12 year veteran of the United States Air Force that served her country proudly, you know? And then we saw more video that came out later on from Taylor Hansen that she was actually, she actually punched the guy that was broke, that broke the window. Nobody, no, you know, a lot of people don't know that she was not wanting that guy to break the window. She was wanting to stop him from doing what he was doing to that window. When she jumped up in that window, it was directly after she had punched that man that broke the window. There's video evidence of it. And, and what happened was is she, she was stuck. There was no way to get out of that, that area. So what's the one place that you're going to go the only route out is it was through the window. And unfortunately she lost her life, you know, from a guy that was bloodthirsty and in my opinion, a psychopathic murderer, you know, mm -hmm. because evidently he has no problem just killing somebody that's unarmed mm -hmm. for any reason, you know? Right. And, and also too, yes, I had uh, four people uh, talk about you um, that, that were involved with the uh, J six, but they were trying to get you involved. Nick Fuentes, Michael Lee Wells, Ryan Kelly and Kelly Sorrell. And, um, you know, tell, tell us more about those persons and um, you know what they said about you, you know, being uh truth or uh, fictitious. Uh, well, no, what happened was, is they tried to subpoena me to January 6th to select committee. OK, so what ended up happening was that they, they did depositions with other people, calling them to the January 6th select committee to do depositions. And what ended up happening is, is the, the January 6th select committee was questioning these people, trying to connect me to these people. Uh, Nick Fuentes, I didn't even know who the guy was. No clue. I still don't even really know who the guy is. I know he like runs around with yay or something like that, but I don't know who the guy is. Never met the dude, never talked to him, never had anything to do with him. And, you know, basically they're asking this guy, you know, all these, there's, there's several that we caught and they're trying to tie me to these people that I had nothing to do with. I mean, they were absolutely fishing for anything they possibly could get, you know, to chart to, to connect me to January 6th in DC. And they couldn't because I, I wasn't connected to it, you know, but they didn't care. They were, they were going to push it and push it and push it. I've actually got the copies of the depositions where they're asking, do you know this guy? You know, do you know Eric Braden? Do you know the general? You know, do you know this guy? And they're like, no, we have no no clue who you're talking about. We no, absolutely not. So it's 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 kind of a it's a weird thing to to know. And then they put me on a video on January 6th on, on the select committee where you know they put me up there and they got me quote, you know, quoting me on, you know, the constitution and you know the the punishment for treason is death, which that's written in our constitution you know it's 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 part of what it says there so i mean quote you know so quoting the constitution quoting 
you know, quoting that makes you makes you, uh, you know, a criminal now, I guess, or some kind of dangerous individual, whatever. You know, it's kind of like flying the gas in the flag or talking about Waco or Ruby Ridge, all those things they consider being a militia, violent extremist, you know, talk or something like that. Really, what it is, is they don't want people talking about the dirt. Mm hmm. Right. And and also you had uh, was it Michael Lee Wells, Ryan Kelly, Kelly Sorrell and everything else. And um, and of course, you also, uh, you know, trying to get uh, featured in a book as well, too. And um, do, do you think with yours, it's like, you know, just really expose the truth and everything else? Uh, I don't know about the other people, uh, the, the, the other folks. I'm not sure, quite sure where you got those from. Uh, I know. Uh, Julie Kelly, we had a, an incident recently uh, with Julie Kelly putting out uh, wrong information on a on a person that was, uh, you know, cl- they're, they're, everybody was claiming that she was some kind of FBI informant, which she wasn't. Uh, she was a confidential human source, and she didn't even know she was that. Um, basically, she was she was um, reporting on Antifa and turning Antifa in, you know, for, for stuff like that and and uh, reporting it to the FBI and trying to get them to investigate these threats, you know, mortal threats, people threatening lives and violence and all that kind of stuff. All the things that none of us agree with, none of us agree with, you know, making threats or, you know, towards somebody's life or anything like that. So, you know, this, this woman was doing that. And uh, so I, we, we, we kind of set the, the record straight in many different ways. Uh, you know, she got the information out, she got the truth out. We got all that kind of worked out, but there's been a lot of, you know, kind of rough stuff like that that's happened, uh, you know, that we, that we pushed through. Mm-hmm. And, and and also too that uh, are you still being pursued by um attorneys and the others for your uh january 6th or any other issue at this time we speak are you still being pursued no no i quashed the, i got the, the subpoena quashed um i i ended up having an attorney uh successfully quash that subpoena i was one of the only people in america that was su- successful in, in actually you know squ- quashing the subpoena legitimately because it was, there was no basis for it. It was absolutely, it was uncalled for. Uh, it was harassment, really, was what it was, what it came down to. When I started doing research and I started looking into things, six days after I called out the the, the lack of security for January six. Okay, so six days after I called out in front of the, the you know in front of the, the Texas Capitol with a bunch of other people that they had failed to do the proper security measures that day on January six. Okay, and then I, I called out the Ashley Babbitt murder. And there's several other things I, b- I brought up Antifa, the fact that they were there and they were. I mean, that was proven. I mean, the, the Jake next guy that was filming Ashley Babbitt's, you know, murder was he was Antifa. You know, so, I mean, it's it's not real hard. There's there's video footage. Uh, there's actually video footage that just came out of police officers that are stating that, hey, we're, you know, you know, they were admitting that they're undercover to each. You know, they knew each other and they were talking to police officers were undercover acting as Antifa today. Mm-hmm. I mean, literally dr- cops undercover cops police officers and 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 several different you know agencies dressed up as antifa to instigate the patriots hmm that is rather interesting and of course la- and of course lastly as well too if if you were in uh, charge of texas and uh, you know trying to change the laws what are some of the uh, the things you would change okay i are, are you with well, us the sir? biggest thing i'd change is 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 uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, the biggest thing I I, I would I would fix immediately is, is the is the, the the drugs coming across the border. Uh, I mean that with that comes the immigration you know aspect of it. Uh, I, I truly think that I, I feel like this has been an invasion. Okay. You know when when you have some people come in, yeah, it's people you know illegal illegally immigrating. But when you have millions and millions of people, millions and millions and millions of people that have come through a border, okay. You know that when do you call it an invasion? What, what when? What, what what is the number? What what number does it take before it just becomes people looking for a, a better life, and it becomes people that are abusing the fact that the border is open? And then we got the cartels that have openly just brought the drugs through, and there's even more dangerous drugs that are that are uh, that have just come out worse than fentanyl that are now causing even a, a skyrocketing in deaths. So really, it comes down to protecting the people. Uh, it also comes down to sovereignty. Are we a sovereign nation or not? I believe that if Texas was a sovereign nation, we should shut everything down. And the bottom line is, if you came here illegally and you, did, and you didn't have an invite and you didn't put your paperwork in there, I've, I've known people that have gone through embassies in, in, in Uganda, a friend of mine that has gone to the embassy three times and, and paid over a couple of hundred dollars just to put their, 
you know, their, their attempt to, to come to America in, you know, properly, you know, and I mean, travels all the way up. I mean, $200 in Uganda and which it's, it's a, it's a family that has orphans. They take care of, or the mother is the headmaster at the school and takes care of all the orphans in the village. And this, and this young man <laughs> takes care of him is highly educated, speaks three different languages, you know, a good guy, good young man. And he puts in to, to try to come here and I'm, I'm willing to take care of him. He's got a sponsor that's a veteran of the United States Army, mm -hmm. you know, and I, we're well off and can take care of him. And this guy gets denied three times. So he's he's doing it the right way all these times. And these people are just benefiting and, and just walking right through. It just it, it, it makes it to where it cheapens the, the fact that people that really did the right way it cheapens their citizenship. It really does. It, it kind of, it's, it's a spit in their face when it really comes down to it. Mm -hmm. and, and lastly, how can we help? Well, the biggest way you can help is, is, is for people to realize what the truth about J six is and what we do right now. We got J six on a right now playing right next to me. And, uh, what they're doing is they're telling the truth. They're telling their stories. Many of them are saying, yes, you know, I did. I caused damage to that window. I did it. You know, they admit that. But they're being charged for, for felonies that will put them in prison for 20 years. We watch people doing that for two years all over the country, murdering people all over the place. These people did one stupid thing, one stupid act, whatever it was. And they're trying to put them away for almost life. And that's and it's just not. So really what I want everybody to do. Is, is get more in tune with the truth. I, I don't want people to, you know, to think that what we're doing is we're trying to, to, you know, agree with what everybody did. Not everybody did everything right, but it's important that we know the truth. We got fed lies and we, you know, we do on Twitter, we do Twitter spaces. I'm, I'm the general on, on Twitter spaces. We do a, tw a Twitter space every single day and we put uh, a new J6er comes up or somebody speaks up. We, we got programs that we're putting together to, to assist these people and they're, you know, bring it, you know, coming back into out into the world after they get out and assisting them with uh, early release and, and so forth. You know, uh, it, it, people need to hear these stories and how, how devastating, you know, it's been to their families. I've got a brother up in Oklahoma right now. who didn't go into the Capitol, didn't attack anybody, but it's simply for the fact that he was the president of a 3% group. They had, they gave him 52 months in prison, you know, and they lot, they kidnapped him from, from Texas. They didn't even they didn't have an indictment, a warrant or anything. So, I mean, people need to understand that the way that's, that this has been handled has been absolutely unconstitutional. So we have the space, uh, you know, uh, under my name, uh, if we can. Twitter's been censoring me for three weeks. It hasn't hasn't allowed me to even hold the space. So there's censorship on Twitter that's still going on right now to stop the truth about what happened on J6. And we have testimony on those spaces. You know, right now we've got, got people in the D.C. jail speaking right now on the space and and what they're what they're talking about is their experience and, and and basically what they did and what they didn't do you know and how long they've been there some of them have been in there for two years for wow. misdemeanors my for misdemeanors oh my gosh. that is that is unbelievable and uh how else can people reach you and what's your website and how can people reach you if uh, your twitter's been shut down well that's the main that's the main way to, to reach me is, is twitter it's uh just go to uh at the general two four nine. You can put that in there, or just the general. You'll see the Punisher symbol with a, a gold ring around it. And uh, can you see me? All right. Yes, I can see. Yeah, it. you can see me. Okay. Oh. Yeah, and that's that's the best way right now. Uh, we've got other ways of, of connecting up. Uh, so, but that's the main one, Mike. Okay, that sounds good. We'll certainly do that. What's co what's coming up for General Eric Braden? We'll find out just one minute. Listen to the Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Soundcraft Studios, and brought to you by official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia Missing. We'll be back with Texas Ranger, Army veteran, and political activist Eric Braden after this time. We're back to Texas Ranger, uh, Texas Rancher, Army veteran, political activist Eric Braden here on the Mike Wagner Show. And Eric, you cover a lot about uh, what happened on January 6th and just about everything else. And uh, what can we expect from you in 2023 and beyond? Well, you know, we're coming up on the new election. You know, we got we got the, the next election coming up. We got, you know, Trump being charged with the uh, stuff from 80 years ago. You know, I, I, I heard that, you know, he's, he's getting charged. Uh, He's getting, there's another felony pending on, on Donald Trump now. So they're they're put they're they're trying to put another felony on top of the other 34 or 36 that he's got. 
Uh, apparently, he took he ripped the, the mattress tag off of his mattress in 1992. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and get him that. Uh, thank you, oh, <laughs> thank not, you, Babylon B. <laughs> so, not, you know, not who, that, who was it? Was it Stormy Daniels or was uh, ex wife that did that? Really? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it's uh, really, I mean, it when it comes down to it, you, you have to you have to understand the real situation. Okay, we've become divided. Mm -hmm. We have to stop becoming, we have to stop being divided. My mother was a liberal my entire life. And I still love her. I love my mother. She was a feminist, a liberal. She voted for Obama. She voted for Hillary. But this last time she voted for Trump. Huh. And there's a reason because of that. There's a reason. And the reason because of that is because the left have gone way too far left. All right. And mm -hmm. blame with the, what the left is blaming the right's doing is exactly what they're doing. So I've I've had a lot of lot of you know you know conversations with with people on the left. I have no problem with people that want to speak logic and reason and common sense and and, and be human. Mm -hmm. You know I think the dialogue needs to be opened up. You know when when it gets down to it, we have to we have to really come together with truth and honesty and have the integrity to be able to to come to the table and be honest about the situation. We have a man right now that cannot find his way off of the stage. Okay. <laughs> and, and he doesn't remember why. He, cannot, and he doesn't remember why. He doesn't. I mean, what what are we doing here? You know, and, and I, I mean, and we look back at 2020. I mean, is there anybody that really either on the left or right believes that this guy got 81 million votes? How's that happen? I mean, the most popular president in history of all time, 81 million votes. I mean, people had that much faith in this guy. I mean, he wrote the crime bill that put a ton of people in, in, in prison. <laughs> you know, I mean, he, he took away, you know, the ability. I mean, he was part of the, you know, the the, the taking away of the, the the rifles, the AR-15s, being able to buy those. You know, I mean, we we watched the agenda, the leftist agenda, into a mutated version of, of like, you know, of this upside down world. It doesn't make any sense. You know, I mean, it's like if if they wanted to actually go after all the guns. You got a lot of people that would be standing in the way of that, not be okay with it. That means that they want us to be in trouble because we're not willing to do it. I mean, mm -hmm. you're talking about, about millions and tens of millions of people that would not be willing to do, you know, what they want to do. We don't want them reading, you know, we don't want transvestites reading to our children, you know, at, at libraries. We don't want them doing that. I mean, I, I, most of the, 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 the lesbian gay you know, uh, culture out there doesn't want them doing that either. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, there's a big movement in the, in the, in, in the gay, you know, culture that's actually way far against, you know, that. So mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, it really comes down to, to this, these, these small, real rogue extreme kind of like people out here that are pushing agendas that are causing a rift in a lot of this, a lot of our culture and a lot of our ways and it's got to be understood, you know, it's, it's kind of like COVID, you know, we can't go through that. Again. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it, you can't, you, got, you can't have nurses and doctors work for two years during a pandemic without a vaccine and then tell them you're going to fire them after they've risked their life for two years of, a, you know, treating an unknown virus. It's not fair. It's not right. We have to start mm -hmm. thinking about things in a real moral and ethical way and come to the table with logic and reason. And there is a lot, not a whole lot of that going on right now. Right, exactly. Yeah. And of course, uh, just a couple of things as well, too. Who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Uh, biggest influence in, in my career? Or yes. Is? Just just uh, overall. Uh, you know, I mean, ad advocacy is not really a career. It's it's a it's a calling. You know, I, I haven't gotten paid a dime for anything I've done. I, I'm not I'm never going to seek any kind of money for it. Um, I, I've done interviews. I mean, I've you know, I've, I've told you, Mike, I, I've, I've communicated with you know, left wing people. I've, 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 you know, had BBC at my house, you know, I've, mm -hmm. I've you know, been on TRT, you know, there's, there's, you know, there's, I, I guess the ability for me to kind of reach past that, that point of, of no return that most people have, uh, it kind of comes from my dad, you know, he's a Vietnam vet. He was kind of the reason why I went into the military and the army. And, uh, he was 11 Bravo. Uh, I became an 11 Bravo. Uh, so my dad, he's a rancher, you know, uh, just a, a gentle soul. When it comes down to it and he kind of he really kind of he put things in perspective for me you know right He's, that's exactly it and what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point direction. and what's the best advice you can the give to anybody at this point give, the best advice that i can give anybody and, and i mean anybody 
is don't trust the news. Don't ever trust the news. Don't trust either side of it, right or left wing. And, and, and above all, if the government tells you that this is the truth, don't believe them because almost everything the government is saying in every kind of way is damn near a lie at this point. So we gotta we got to trust our own, own discernment and our own logic. Mm -hmm. And that's very true as well, too. Once again, with Eric Braden, Texas Ranger, Army veteran, and political activist here on the Mike Wagner Show. Eric, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Live have you back. Once again, how do people reach you? Although you have a website, and uh, and, or, and basically just uh, if you have uh, anything else, it's like how can people reach you? Uh, the, really the best way is on Twitter. Uh, that's, that, that's, that's the main way at the general two, four, nine, uh, is how you look me up. That'll pop me up right away. Or you can just put in the general, it'll be a punisher symbol, uh, with the gold ring around it, page six or tone, which is exactly what we're doing. Uh, you know, so that's, that's the best way to really, really get a hold of me. Uh, at this point, we've, we've got some other websites and stuff that are in the works and projects that we're doing, uh, but we don't have any of that kind of up yet. So Twitter's the best way. Okay, sounds good. We'll do that. Once again, Eric, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Looking forward to having you again soon. Keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Live after you back. Wish you all best. And Eric, you definitely have a great future. Have you? Thanks, Mike. Appreciate you, man.